Sabda Diem Tunisid Begum Sahiba passed away last week at the age of 82. She had a very pleasant nature. She was selfless and extremely caring towards others, in specific the poor. After being elevated to the office of Khilafat, she displayed an extreme honor for the Khilafat, and Hazu said that sometimes he would even feel embarrassed with that level of respect that she, she displayed towards him as the Khalifat al Masih. She would always advise her daughters to be obedient to their husbands and always pay full attention to their comfort. She showed it through her own role model by being obedient to her husband. She was quite regular in offering financial sacrifice. Hazud then read out an, an article by Hazrat Muslim Maud after the death of Sahib Zadi uh, Saiba's mother, Hazrat Sarah Begum Saiba, mentioning the extraordinary patience of late Sahib Zadi Saiba, who was only three and a half years old at that time. In this article, uh, he mentioned her in a very emotional way. Hazrat Anwar then read out a detailed, fervent prayer of Hazrat Muslim Maud for his children. Hazrat also mentioned another three pious souls who recently passed away. Their names were Abdul Wahab Ahmed Shahid Sahib, a devoted Jamaat missionary, Abdul Qadir Fayaz Chandio Sahib, another devoted Jamaat missionary, and a sincere servant of, a jama of Jamaat engineer Munir Ahmed Khan Sahib of Karachi. Hazrat led funeral prayer in absentia of all four departed souls after the Friday prayer. Dear viewers, it is imperative that we listen to Hazrat's Friday sermon firsthand. In our Jamaat news, we give you only a very short summary, which can never be a substitute to listening to complete Friday sermon or its full translation. MT International shows the recordings of the Friday sermon a number of times in the week. MT's YouTube channel also uploads Hazrat's Friday sermon. Alislam.org also puts up a summary of Hazrat's sermon in English. Now we move on to the other Jamaat news. First, we have a report from the U.S. Jamaat of Sierra Leone Independence Day reception at Baitul Rahman Mosque, Maryland. Let's take a look. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On October 16, 2011, 125 Sierra Leoneans gathered at Baitul Rahman Mosque in Silver Spring, Maryland, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of their country's freedom from Britain. I want to thank the Ahmadiyya Mission for putting this together. As Sierra Leone celebrates 50 years of independence, you can imagine how far we've come. The West African nation gained its independence in April of 1961. The meeting began with a Christian prayer, followed by a recitation from the Holy Quran. The national anthems of both Sierra Leone and the United States were sung by a sixth grade Sierra Leonean girl. David Vandy from West Africa's Voice of America gave the opening remarks. When you want to talk about schools, you definitely have to talk about the Ahmadiyya. Dr. Hassan al Zafar, president of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA, gave the welcoming address. I really want to extend my welcome and sincere best wishes. Amir Sahib also relayed greetings from Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Khamis, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asal Aziz. Mr. Muhammad Bangura spoke about services rendered to Sierra Leone and its people by Ahmadi doctors educators and missionaries. He cited the establishment of over 200 schools, three hospitals, 550 Ahmadiyya mosques, an Ahmadiyya missionary training college, and a radio station. Ahmadiyya's contribution to education in Sierra Leone is indeed worthy of a chapter of recognition in the annals of the history of our country. Distinguished guests also included Sierra Leone's ambassador to the United States, Mr. Bakri Stevens, and Mr. M. P. Bayou, a longtime educator and principal at an Ahmadiyya built secondary school in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Ahmadiyya came to serve, to serve forever, the source of wisdom to guide us ever. We will see the Abaza, we will see Zindaba, the slogans of Ahmadiyya have blessings from God. Imam Shimshad Sahib, who served as a missionary in Sierra Leone from 1982 to 1986, expressed his thanks to everyone for participating in the celebration. Fifty years back, when the Sierra Leone nation was celebrating the Independence Day, Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission was proud to participate in that. And after 50 years today, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission, U.S. is proud to host this historical event in our mosque today. Imam Sahib invited members of the audience to relate their experiences and memories of Sierra Leone. That's pretty much 
the country that I know and that I grew up and love. And uh, my, I can say that for my older sisters as well as my mom and my dad. It's a it's very dear place in our hearts. The 50th anniversary event was a wonderful and memorable experience for all the participants. Now we have a report from Sweden, Gothenburg, um, of a book fair where Jamal also organized a stall. Let's take a look. More than 100,000 people, about 900 different book stalls, internationally renowned book authors and Nobel laureates constitute the four days long exhibition on books which is held every year at Kaffenberg in Sweden. Every year, this book fair is inaugurated by a renowned scholar or an important personality. This year, Harta Muller, who is the Nobel Prize laureate in literature, inaugurated the event. Jamaat Ahmadiyya Sweden has been participating in this event for many past years. Due to the presence of a large number of people, the preparation for this event is done with great enthusiasm. The photograph of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu was salam was the center of attention for many visitors at the bookstall. The Jamaat carefully designs many posters for this exhibition to attract visitors' attention. Women rights and Islam, jihad and terrorism are some of the displayed topics. The Holy Quran, translated in many different languages, along with other important books about the Ahmadiyya Jamaat, were also displayed. Brochures about the Jamaat, which are prepared under the kind guidance